The thunderous sound of the helicopter roared over the sound of Steve's stereo. The tremors felt, even inside the safety of his car, reminded Steve of his current predicament. Homer wrote of such horrible events such as being stuck between a rock and a hard place, or succumbing to the deadly song of the siren, or even coming home to find that the hero's wife has taken on another suitor. The Odyssey was always his favorite piece of literature in high school. However, he never anticipated that he would have to endure his own brand of mythological torture. Steve waited for the helicopter to leave before putting his car in drive. His eyes followed the helicopter until it was no longer in sight, knowing that it carried the remnants of his past 20 years. The dark skies of the night started to pale and take on color as Steve turned onto the freeway. Once on the road, Steve silenced his radio and returned to his thoughts. He had to regroup and prepare for what awaited him at St. Mary's Medical. Amber is right. I do need closure. I need to find out why she betrayed me after 20 years. But I'll be damned if I'm going to take it easy on the bee. A one-night stand would be hard to overcome, but we could have done it. A one-night stand in our marital bed. It would take a miracle for me to forgive that, but miracles are known to happen from time to time but a prolonged affair that included giving me a whole a BJ when she denied such favors to me? Hell no. The bee can go F herself. A gentle turn in the road affected Steve's thoughts. Who's going to take care of her, though? If she's left paralyzed from this accident, who's going to be there for her? She is, after all, the mother of your children. The boys are going to need support throughout this, too. You can't just scorch the earth with her burnt carcass. Come on, Steve. Remember when you left the electronics store 15 years ago in search of something better? You disrupted your family's life with the move. And for what? In another five years, you wound up coming back home, forcing yet another disruption in their life. But Jill stood by you then. Okay, she raised Kane a couple of times, but she stood by you. She didn't fully understand, but she was there for you. Feeling the wind gust caused by a semi passing his little car, Steve rebutted his own thoughts. Yeah, but the move was for the betterment of my family. It's not like I chasing tail or did it simply because it's what I wanted to do. I did it because there was more money at the end of that rainbow. I sure as hell didn't cheat on my wife. I definitely had the opportunities, being surrounded by young nurses, but I didn't. I remembered my vows. Okay, I might not have been the best husband during that time. I might have been married to my job more than I was to my wife, but I did it for the money. The boys required braces or needed new equipment for their different sports they played in. Hell, she needed new clothes every year, or she needed a bigger house. I couldn't do that on a salary set in stone based on an associate's degree. If you're enjoying my content, consider joining my Patreon community. By becoming a patron, you'll get access to full parts of my videos much earlier than everyone else. Plus, you'll be supporting me to create even more awesome content for you. Check out the link in the description to join now. The change not only gave me a salary increase, but the shifting of organizations gave me a new perspective. And she left me for a forklift operator? How in the hell is that guy going to give her a better life? Okay, he might be twice my size, full of muscle, but how does that matter? There is more to life than what happens between the sheets. Is he going to be there for her now that she can't walk? Or even better yet? Is he going to be there for her now that she can't feel a damn thing below the waist? Yeah, that a hole is going to move on to the next piece of ass that he can find since she's dead to the world down there. Well, she made her bed so now she has to lie in it. It'll take the parting of the Red Sea for her to convince me otherwise. The theme song to his favorite 80s time traveling movie interrupted his thoughts. His smartphone was aglow, indicating that someone was calling him. The caller ID did not have a picture associated to it, which meant it was not somebody in his contacts. Hello? Hey, a rooster. Steve rolled his eyes and responded with dread in his voice. What do you want, Jimmy? I'm kind of busy. Laughter could be heard in the background as Jimmy managed to maintain some composure. Well, I just wanted to know if I could be next. I hear that your wife gives great. Jimmy and the chorus of male laughter on the other end of the phone did not even realize that Steve hung up on them. Steve pursed his lips together and said resolutely, F you. Between his thoughts and the humiliation, Steve steeled himself and shielded himself from the pain of his broken heart. A determined look materialized in his eye as he turned off the highway. 
The medical center was no longer his destination. His little car chugged in protest at the sudden change in direction and the change in speed, but Steve had been pushed past his limits. He forced his car to the envelope as well. With phone in hand, Steve called Eric. Skipping with formalities, Steve questioned in a no-nonsense tone of voice, Eric, do you still have those tools from your cyber defense competition? Eric's voice was filled with concern and suspicion, though the excitement of using the hacker tools in an unethical manner could not be missed either. Sure, but why? Or do I want to know? It will be best that you don't. Could you have them ready for me in about 10 to 15 minutes? Steve paused for a moment as ideas continued to formulate in his head. Oh, and we never had this conversation. This phone call is nothing more than me telling you that I won't be in today, and that you'll need to rebuild the central switch. Eric did not hide his glee, right boss? A thumb drive will be waiting for you in my mailbox. Don't do anything that I would do. During his trek back to his hometown, the sun broke over the horizon and illuminated the countryside. The golden sun hung like a heavenly beacon to his destination, beckoning him to reach his true destination. All of his worries and problems were left behind at the point where he made his U-turn. The only thing that mattered now was the next step. It did not take long for him to acquire the tools necessary for his desired plan of retribution. With the thumb drive in hand, Steve punched in the address of Christopher Whitman to his smartphone's GPS application. The computerized voice of the phone's application reminded him of one of his favorite sci-fi television series, which brought a smile to his face. Engage, he thought to himself as he started driving to the new coordinates. Though Steve tried to remain stoic as he drove to where the computerized voice directed him, but the egresses of the run-down trailer park conjured up hurtful images. She would rather F some guy who can barely afford to live in an aluminum box than be with me? Hell, that Mustang of his is probably worth more than this entire park. He tilted his head to one side as his lips curled with a sinister look, that a hole was probably too cheap to pay for full coverage. His display of driving skills probably meant the end to his muscle car. As the computerized voice indicated that he was arriving at his destination, the smartphone flashed the presence of Wi-Fi networks in the area. Not a single wireless network had a padlock symbol by them, which meant that they were not encrypted. Steve shook his head as he pulled into an abandoned trailer's parking area. He looked up to the ceiling of his car as he thought to himself, thank you for stupid people. He reached into the back seat of his car to retrieve his laptop and quickly plugged in the thumb drive that Eric left for him. Screens flashed in front of him as he navigated through the different tools and the different internet addresses. His eyes flickered from word to word, focused on the task in front of him. The apathetic and indifferent nature of the residents of the trailer park paid little attention to the beat-up car, or the fact that the driver did not get out of his car. Silent gratitude came from Steve once again. You're definitely making up for last night. As he hit the enter button to implement this last command on his computer, Steve punched the ceiling repeatedly. Huh. I never thought I'd be so happy with the city's budget cuts than I am right now. Steve navigated the new screens, which belonged to the police department's new information system with a vengeance. They really should have spent the money to get a worthwhile IT director for the city. Oh well, their frugality is my gain. A few clicks of the keyboard caused yet another smile to form on Steve's face. What was Officer Rickman thinking when he scheduled that? Didn't he know that the car should have just been impounded, not scheduled to be destroyed at the junkyard today at 9 a.m.? Steve spoke in his best, Spanish-accented English while shaking his finger at the screen. Jimmy, you have a lot of explaining to do. Steve entwined his fingers together and stretched his hands out forward. The cracking of his knuckles reverberated throughout the interior of his car. Satisfied with his accomplishments on those screens, Steve uttered, Next. Steve dug into his laptop's carrying case to retrieve a single sheet of paper, where Steve scribbled all of Christopher Whitman's personal information and demographics. Of course, the street address was necessary for the first part of this voyage. However, more vital information was needed to complete the task. Here, Steve called out in his mind. Steve showed little hesitation in typing Christopher Whitman's social security number and all of his other personal financial information into known phishing sites. One last thing, mutters Steve, as he pulled up a new web page. Heartland Trucking's website promoted the small fleet of trucks owned by Daniel Hart, his next-door neighbor and husband to Gloria. 
Let's see if he does web hosting, or if he actually has his website on his own network. If he does, he's going to be broken Heartland Trucking. Much to his surprise, the web page for the small trucking company did sit on the perimeter of their network. With a few well-placed programs and utilization of unblocked ports in the company's firewall, Steve accessed Dan's place of business. Financial records and employee records were the first items of business. However, the logistical software was his desired designation. Deleting records or altering the cargo's intended destination was only a few examples of the chaos that Steve had planned for the people that screwed with his life. When Steve looked up from the computer screen, the morning sun had shifted to be high overhead. He arched his back and rolled his head, helping to alleviate some of the kinks that come with sitting in an improper position. Physical therapists always rant and rave about ergonomics. Now, I can see why. Steve rubbed his neck as he looked around the trailer park. Steve started up the engine to his car. Get used to your new home, you trailer park W. After stopping for gas, Steve drove an hour on the highway to St. Mary's Medical Center. After performing his ritual of digital retribution, Steve's mind was at peace. The question lingered as to why the love of his life betrayed him, but it no longer tugged at his heart. No more tears were cried as Steve had buried the past week under the ones and zeros used to destroy the lives of those who ruined his life. The tinted glass windows, the waterfall in the lobby, and other architectural designs indicated wealth and luxury, a polar opposite of the hospital in Steve's small hometown. The use of technology in the visitors' kiosks was only one example of the advances found in the larger facility. Steve could not hide his envy as he navigated his way to where his wife recovered from surgery. I can only imagine what the medical bill is going to be like after this mess, wondered Steve.